Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are doing a video showing you a shortcut for factoring trinomials when a equals one, when we talk about the lead coefficient being one. If you have watched our factoring by grouping, then this is gonna be pretty smooth for you and be a great shortcut so you don't have to do that entire process with trinomials when a is one in particular. We're gonna do the first one by grouping and show you how the shortcut works, and then we'll actually do the shortcut on several more. So if you look at this, we have x squared plus 9x plus 14. This is actually a 1x squared. So in this example, we have a equal to 1, which allows us to do this shortcut we're going to develop. b is 9 and c is 14. I'm gonna do the full grouping method on this, uh, and then we will not use the full grouping method on any of the others. So here, a times c, since a is 1, a times c is just c, right? 1 times 14 would be 14, and b is 9. And the way we do grouping, if you recall, is that we look for two numbers that multiply to give us a times c, in this case 14, and those same two numbers add to give us b, in this case, which is 9. So if you think about factors of 14 that will add to give us 9, probably pretty quickly we'll come up with 2 and 7. 2 times 7 would be 14 and 2 plus 7 is 9. So we will regroup our b term 9x in terms of 2 and 7. So we will have x squared. We don't change the first term. So regrouping 9x as like terms using 2 and 7 would be 2x and 7x. We will keep the c term as well. So again, all we've changed is broken up the b term, the middle term, into two separate pieces. Now if we do the full grouping method, we would look at the first half and say what's the greatest common factor in the first half, and we would pull out an x, and then left over we would have x in the first term, and we would have 2 in the second term. So I get x times x plus 2 for the first half. Looking at the second half, remember we would copy down x plus 2 because we know we need to find it there as well, and we say what times x plus 2 gives us the second half, and the answer is plus 7. 7 times x gives us 7x, and 7 times 2 gives us the 14. Remember that the shared x plus 2 in each half is one of our factors, and the outsides x plus 7 combine to give us the second factor. Now that's all stuff we would have done in the factoring by grouping intro and all of the example videos we did with that method. What we want to see as the shortcut here is that if a is 1 and I do the factoring by grouping, what ends up happening is that the numbers that I choose, 2 and 7 in this case, that work out to give us the 14 and the 9, those numbers are also what appear in our factor, and that is something that is only guaranteed to happen when a equals 1. So if we do the factoring by grouping, and we say what are the numbers that multiply and add to give us these things, and we say 2 and 7, we can immediately put those in our factors, making sure that we put the correct thing in front of each factor to make the appropriate terms work out in the end. So our answers here, x plus 2, x plus 7, we can get those from a shortcut once we spot the numbers here. Let's show you several examples of what we're talking about. So here I have x squared minus 14x plus 40, a equals 1 here, so I can use my shortcut. And so I look at a times c is just going to be c, right? So I look at numbers that will multiply to give us 40, and they will add to give us negative 14, which is the b. So I need numbers that will do that. I can see that multiplying to get a positive 40 means they're both the same sign, and adding to give us a negative means they're both negative. In this case, we have negative 4 and negative 10 will work. So if I know those are the numbers that work for my situation here, then my answer is simply going to be x minus 4 and x minus 10. And the reason I know that x goes in the front because x times x will give me x squared, and I would need an x term when I distribute to give me my middle term. Okay, so x minus 4 
x minus 10. Nice little shortcut where we don't have to go through the entire factoring by grouping process all the way. Here's another one. Again, a equals 1 here. We have x squared minus 6x plus 5. a times c is 5. If I look for numbers that multiply to give me 5. b is negative 6. And so I say what numbers will multiply to give me 5 and add to give me 6. Again, multiplying to get positive would make them the same sign, and adding to give a negative would mean they're both negative. So if I think about it for a second, the only things that will really give me 5 if I'm multiplying are 1 and 5, so they need to both be negative. Negative 1 times negative 5 will give me 5, and negative 1 plus negative 5 would give me negative 6. So those are the numbers that go in the factor. Negative 1, negative 5, so I get x minus 1 and x minus 5. Hopefully this shortcut is making some sense to you. You can always do the full grouping method on these when a is 1. This is just a shortcut that might help you save a little time when we have this special case. Let's look at another one. Here a is 1. We have x squared minus x minus 12. Uh, a is 1, so a times c is going to be negative 12, exactly what c is. And then here, minus x tells us that b is actually negative 1 in this one. So negative 1. We want things that multiply to get negative 12 and add to get negative 1. They're multiplying to get a negative, so they're opposite signs. They're adding to get a negative, so the bigger number should be negative. If you think about it for a second, you might get that negative 4 times 3 will give us negative 12, and negative 4 plus 3 will give you negative 1. So negative 4 and 3 are the numbers that work in my situation here. In the end, we would get x minus 4 and x plus 3 as our answer for how this factors. All right, let's do another just with a different variable. a is 1. This is a 1t squared here, minus 9t plus 20. So if we look at a times c, that would just be c, which is 20. And if we look at b, b is negative 9. So make sure we keep the negative sign there. So we want things that multiply to give us positive 20 and add to give us negative 9. Uh, if we look here, multiplying to get a positive means same sign. Adding to get a negative would mean they're both negative. So if we can tell here, answers would be negative 4 and negative 5. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. And negative 4 plus negative 5 gives us negative 9. So negative 4 and negative 5 will be the numbers that go in the factors. Now this is a t-square problem, so we should have t minus 4 and t minus 5, so that we end up with t square and t terms when we do the distributing of these factors. All right, last example here, we're just using variable a. Don't be distracted from the fact that our coefficients are also called a, b, and c. So here actually a is 1, b is 13, and c is 42. Just making sure that we aren't distracted by the fact that I'm now using a as a variable. Uh, so a times c here is 42, and b is 13, and we need numbers that multiply to give us 42, and the same numbers add to give us 13. And if you think about factors of 42, you might come up with fairly quickly that this is in fact 6 times 7, and indeed both numbers are positive. 6 times 7 is 42, and 6 plus 7 is 13. So remember that the variable is a here, but 6 and 7 are what will go in the factor with a, so we will have a plus 6 and a plus 7. If any of this is a bit much and seems a little confusing, you can always factor these by grouping all the way. You will still get these same answers. Again, this is just a shortcut that can help you save some time when a equals 1 and you're factoring trinomials. All right, give this a try on some of your problems. We hope it helps you out. Good luck.